Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Chris Panaris and I am the Marketing Manager for Exclusive Networks USA. Exclusive Networks is a global value-added distributor for cybersecurity vendors and today we are kicking off our GigaNet webinar series. This series will explain the technology alliance between two of our premier cybersecurity vendors, Gigamon and Fortinet. The products and solutions from each of these companies are highly complementary, and in order to better service reseller partners, we will be taking the time to explore their combined benefits. Joining us today, we have David Yang, Director of Pre- and Post-Sales Services for Exclusive Networks. He will be monitoring the chat for any comments or questions. Also joining us today, we have Juan Quintero, he is one of our pre-sales engineers here at Exclusive Networks, and he will be guiding us through today's webinar. In today's webinar, Juan will dive into the first technical topic of the discussion for the series, TAP versus SPAN, where he will discuss how to plan for a successful deployment of the Gigamon visibility fabric, the advantages of TAPs over using SPAN ports, where to TAP, and how to use SPAN when tapping is not possible. Juan will also touch on the various TAP models, installation, and more. Without further ado, Juan, take it away. So first things first, I wanna give everybody an idea of the things to come and what we hope to accomplish with each of the stages of the webinar series. So in this slide, we're gonna have to take, um, take a, a, look at, a brief look at that. So we plan to have three stages or seasons to the series. The first seasons will be all about introducing the Gigamon visibility fabric to our partners and we will do that in a hierarchical way from the bottom up. We will have an episode for each of the components starting with TAPS and we're gonna look at TAPS later on today. Uh, the next two upcoming episodes will be uh, focusing on traffic aggregation where we'll discuss the TA series notes and then we will talk about the HC series uh, intelligent boxes. Uh, we will talk about the H series notes in episode uh, three in both physical and virtual form factor. And then we will end season one with an episode on the management and orchestration layer with Fabric Manager. In each of the episodes, we're gonna talk about the appliances themselves, different configurations, common setups and use cases, how Gigamon can help maximize the return on investment and longevity on, on existing tools by improving the reach of those tools and maximizing the quality of the data delivered to the tools by pre-filtering data and ensuring the right traffic is being forwarded to the right tools. The goal of the season one is to deliver a business perspective to Gigamon's offering as a solution to common organizational IT pro uh, problems and how you can have conversations with your existing Fortinet customers as well as new customer opportunities about enhancing or complementing the existing solutions with Gigamon. And for new customers, we can offer them a better overall solution with Fortinet and Gigamon together. In season two, we will take a more technical approach. It will target the HC series heavily, focusing on specific building materials and configuration details to meet specific use cases. So what I've done for that is number one, I've reached out to Gigamon uh, for them to give me information about their most commonly distributed solution configurations. But I also wanna reach out to our partners and that's gonna be you guys uh, in regards to problems that they encounter where they think that Gigamon could be a solution and have our partners give us information about those use cases so that when we can discuss them uh, in our episodes. So stay tuned for that and please provide us some feedback so that we can use that for upcoming episodes. In season two, we will also have at least one, maybe more than one uh, episode dedicated to Gigamon Insight, which is the new network detection and uh, response platform for Gigamon which will be using the HC1 box as a network sensor next year. We'll look at the HC1 later on today. Inside is a SaaS based solution designed by responders for responders. And it is un a unique cloud based NDR solution that gives the user a broad situational awareness in combination with real time access to historical data to accelerate threat detection and response. So good correlations, fast queries for threat hunting, less time spent determining root cause. So for those of you who are thinking about um, offering you know, managed detection response to your customers, um, if you have Gigamon on the customer's network, you can now use it also to send information to your NDR and offer your clients more services.
We will culminate the series with a detailed look at the Gigamon Cloud offering, specifically their new AnyCloud solution approach, which basically is their, um, they're, they're trying to make sure that all of their offerings are in line regardless of infrastructure. So season three will be all about building and deploying a multi-cloud environment. We will also cover some of the arc, their upcoming projects and new technology developments. And we will talk about their new floating licensing model, which allows the floating of licenses between nodes. Licenses traditionally have been tied to the physical or virtual nodes themselves, but that will change. Um, we will actually discuss that before season three towards the end of season one, where we talk about management and orchestration. Uh, but since that initiative is kind of being deployed out in stages, we will kind of touch on it or come back to it as more features are made available. We will have uh, demonstrations both in season two and three. All right, so the content for today, um, essentially, you know, we're gonna talk about, uh, we're gonna have a, an overview of the fabric to make sure that everybody has a solid foundation. And then after that, we're gonna talk about tabs. So what is Gigamon? Gigamon is a network packet broker, also known as a visibility platform or traffic and security delivery platform. So all those names fit and they basically help you maximize, uh, maximize the, useful, the usefulness of your security tools. So Gigamon is basically a, a fantastic tool for giving an organization pervasive visibility into their network data across a multi-environment distributed infrastructure. So how does Gigamon help you? So Gigamon gives you access and control over your data. It boosts security efficiency and reduces complexity and in the hopes of increasing confidence in your security posture. Uh, but not false sense of confidence, but real confidence for which visibility is a big part. So once a company grows past a certain size, and I kind of experienced this you know, at my last job, the degree of complexity of its network infrastructure causes a visibility problem. And you cannot protect what you cannot see. So usually, you, know, you have to make a compromise as to what, how do you prioritize monitoring what kind of traffic you're gonna, you're gonna monitor. Uh, because those are dollars that you have to spend. So those decisions might be internal and sometimes they are dictated by external factors like compliance uh, requirements, a lot of the times actually. So traditional companies would choose to monitor core traffic, but that's not really longer viable. Um, there is a lot of traffic that never gets to the core appliances. What happens to all that local traffic closer to the edge? Well, it often gets ignored because it's cost prohibitive to invest in a whole security solution to cover it. And the tools monitoring the core network can't reach it because it's too far. And that traffic is usually lower speed traffic over lower utilized links. Hence the issue when you talk about deploying, um, you know, a security solution and the cost that is associated with that. Also, you know, what happens when you have, uh, an infrastructure that includes multiple geolocations or you have a hybrid infrastructure including private and you know, public cloud. From an operational perspective, Gigamon can help organizations minimize the impact of network and tool upgrades by putting the Gigamon solution in line on the network and feeding the security tools from it. And I'll get back to that in the upcoming slides. Gigamon can facilitate network and security upgrades by minimizing the impact of each individual project on the whole organization, ensure business continuity doing upgrades on all troubleshooting scenarios, boost the efficiency of tools, which is illustrated in the upcoming slides and reduce complexity of their overall security and visibility deployment solution. The end goal here is for the end user, your customer, to boost the overall confidence in their security posture. And this is gained by added visibility, simplification, and proper tool utilization benefits that Gigamon brings to the overall security solution. All right, so this slide uh, illustrates more clearly some of the issues that I touched on just now. And first we can see the visibility problem. The reach of each tool is limited as it relates to the overall size of the network. 
and deployment of tools to cover the whole network infrastructure is again cost prohibitive. So if you kind of look at and uh, think of the Honeycomb as your entire network infrastructure, you can kind of see um, the first issue illustrated here, which is that each tool can only cover a small portion of it. The second and less apparent issue is that of poor tool utilization, resulting from poor or ad hoc tool placement dictated by growing nature of your typical organization's uh, infrastructure over time, as well as the necessity to be compliant uh, you know, at a moment's notice because regulation waits for no one. So how that is illustrated here is when you look at each tool individually, you see that there is a solid color and then there is the other um, color that has the lines through it. So that basically means that each tool is inspecting the solid color, which is what the tool should and can inspect. And then there's a bunch of traffic going through the tool that is irrelevant, that the tool should not be inspected or cannot inspect, but still has to at least make the decision to pass it on to somebody else. So all that is CPU cycles that are being wasted, which equals money wasted. Instead, Gigamon proposes to have it manage and steer and apply intelligence and enrichment to traffic in order to ensure delivery and quality. Hence their motto, the right traffic to the right tools. So it's not just traffic to the right tools, it needs to also be the right traffic. So improve the reach of existing tools to areas that cost did not allow you to before. All right, so these next couple of slides kind of illustrate the previously discussed issues from a different view. Here we see the result of ad hoc tool deployments over time. What we end up with are multiple tools inspecting the same traffic and this results in tool stacking that comes from overutilization of the, the, the first deployments. Since there's no real way that you can ensure that you're capturing everything when proper, proper planning and deployment is not done. So think of Gigamon as your way to offer a long-term value and it enhances the return on investment of the tools. So this is what proper planning would look like with Gigamon becoming the central collection point, applying intelligence and data enrichment and distributing traffic accordingly. And this slide also illustrates the very simple result, which is up here on the top right, you have less tool stacking. So less tools doesn't mean less sales for our partners because the money is going to be spent. It means that the money is going to be spent in a better way. In poorly architected environments, it will be very difficult to revise and upgrade or even do POC for new tools because any changes are gonna result in downtime that the customer cannot afford. If Gigamon is deployed, then the future, any future updates will be easier to plan. They will be, uh, it'll take less time to deploy it and they will be cheaper, so more financially feasible. And we'll get back to that. So I am going to also briefly talk about some of these features here on the bottom right. Uh, first, let's talk about inline bypass. So the challenges with inline bypass are illustrated here. Uh, you have multiple points of failure, physical interfaces that need to match in order for you to connect the tools. Um, it degrades network and application performance. So at any point, any of these tools become slower than all the other ones and you have a bottleneck. It's not scalable. You have the issue with wasted CPU cycles on traffic that tools can or cannot or should not be analyzing. Uh, it's very difficult to do upgrades, POCs, uh, even maintenance. And then tools that are placed in line cannot be moved to out of band operation because again, any changes here would mean disruption in the network. So there is a better way and that is to put Gigamon in line. So they say that the best way to deploy an inline tools is not to put them in line. So this illustration here is uh, very similar to the one a couple of slides ago, it's a little bit uh, simplified. 
from an architectural perspective, you will have improved reliability, your security solution will be more scalable and resilient, making it foolproof, future-proof, that is. You will optimize network performance and tool efficiency. From an operational perspective, you simplify tool maintenance, reduce time to POC and deployment of new projects, making projects simpler, easier to complete, and more financially feasible. And I can't say that enough time, uh, times. If a network upgrade becomes a network slash security upgrade, that means that the parties involved will double, the time doubles, the complexity due to dependencies doubles, and usually the cost doubles. So that's usually how projects die before they even get started. And from a vendor perspective, that is not the recipe for long-term success in the eyes of your customers. The last thing you want is for a client to start thinking that you sold them a solution that is no longer useful. And that's not really the trademark of a trusted advisor, which I'm pretty sure that that's what you guys want to be perceived as in the eyes of your customers. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, media and speed mismatches and you know, adding, removing, and upgrading tools without uh, disruption. So I wanna touch on the fact that Gigamon can take the traffic at the speed of the traffic and feed the tool at the speed of the tool. So uh, basically that means that your tool cannot become a bottleneck for the rest of the network. So think about that. That increases the longevity of existing tools uh, and it also makes it on the, on the subject of adding and removing those tools. It is very easy to just bypass tools or take it out of operation for maintenance and or upgrades. And this gives you, or it gives the organization a lot more flexibility so you don't have to do maintenance at three o'clock in the morning on Sunday. So deploy best in class tools when budget permits without being handcuffed to the consequences uh, that come from uh, network disruption. All right, so next I wanna talk about NetFlow and metadata. So as enterprise networks continue to grow, and network speeds continue to increase the ability for business critical appliances to consume and analyze the additional data that is being generated is diminishing at, in equal proportions. So threat complexity is requiring security devices to take on more complex analytics and it's causing more strain. So already scare compute uh, on appliances that could barely hang on at 10 gigabits per second you're now asking them to deal with 40 and 100 gigabit per second networks. So essentially the problem is too much data and not enough compute. So the answer is metadata. NetFlow is a form of metadata. It's layer four generated data that can increase visibility into traffic across systems. And it's usable and is used to build relationships, correlations and usage patterns between nodes on the network. But only if produced in the right way. So while routers and switches are capable of generating NetFlow metadata, they were not designed to do that for every packet. And this creates challenges and limitations. Not only is a router or switch generated NetFlow sampled, but it is also inconsistent in format and requires processing overhead that can introduce service degradation and latency and uh, drop packets. Additionally, even if you were to solve the processing issues, NetFlow is only layer four and organizations need layer seven application level metadata in order to achieve pervasive actionable visibility and successful analysis. Gigamon can generate both layer four and seven metadata and the key differentiation and benefits is that NetFlow is unsampled. So it supports a range of NetFlow formats including version uh, five, nine, IP fix and Ceph for seamless integration with an unlimited number of standard-based collectors, storage devices, and SIMs, so your FortiSIM, your Splunk, your uh, QRadar. It is done without causing any processing overload or performance degradation. Additionally, Gigamon has extended IP fix to include not only standard information about traffic, like source and destination, um, IP addresses and ports, but also application-specific extensions, such as DNS, URL, and HTTP response codes. Uh, to eliminate the, re the risk of uh, spending expensive production network resources in generating this data, 
Gigamon has enabled uh, operators to offload metadata generation to an out-of-band solutions like the visibility fabric. With Gigamon's flow mapping technology, you can also uh, pick and choose from flows to generate NetFlow and metadata statistics while at the same time you're sending that original traffic, those original packets, to other monitoring tools. Operators can also export NetFlow records plus other network data to multiple collectors concurrently, creating a single flow source for business critical management applications such as uh, security, billing, capacity planning, and more. And finally, they can filter exported flow so that collectors only receive the specific records relevant to them. So again, kind of to recap, you have pervasive visibility with NetFlow generation across the entire network. So security performance monitoring tools get complete view of the network versus isolated view from individual segments generated by specific networking appliances. You have high throughput, so no performance impact coming from the generation of NetFlow uh, on, on the networking appliances because they're not doing it. Unsampled NetFlow, so let me say that one more time. Unsampled NetFlow, uh, support for a wide range of NetFlow export formats. Uh, also ingress filtering on layer two, three, and four headers using Gigamon flow mapping and support for uh, multiple collectors with customizable templates and filters. So in the next slide, these are some of the uh, metadata generated. I'm gonna let you guys look at that for a couple seconds and catch my breath, drink some water. I'm not gonna read all of them because they're mostly acronyms and uh, my tongue is gonna get all twisted. All right, so. Let's move on to one of my favorite cases uh, for metadata generation. So in August, towards the end of August, I had the opportunity to visit Gigamon's headquarters for their annual GigaCon conference. And basically it's, it's a technical conference, so a lot of Gigamon SEs, but also a lot of partner SEs and, and engineers and, and whatnot. And they give a bunch of presentation about new technologies, workshops, how to do certain things. You know, met a lot of people there. Um, what I saw was that a lot of those partner vendors, I would say two out of every three of the folks I met were vendors who one of their main products was Splunk. And they were there trying to figure out a way to minimize the cost for their customers associated with the storage as it relates to SIM, storage of information. So they were looking at Gigamon metadata engine as a way to do that. Now I could spend the next 30 minutes talking about this slide alone, but you know, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna do that. I will encourage you to go on the Gigamon website if you guys are partners, you can log into the portal, go to the training section, and under the technical part, there is a video there that they have, I think it's about 15 minutes or so, that talks about this use case specifically. So um, also I kind of have a, a, a trivia question I'm gonna ask, what is the best way to find a needle in a haystack? And I'm gonna leave that open. If nobody has answered it, um, I'll answer it at the end of the episode. If you've seen any of the MCU movies, you probably know what the answer is. All right, so visibility is not the end game. Now visibility is a means to do something. Now that you have expanded your reach and you can access more than ever before, you have the ability to manipulate and steer traffic the way you want it to go. You can apply intelligence, which means you can leverage Gigamon's application database. They have over 3,000 applications mapped out to see what's traversing your network. 
you can generate metadata for your tools, and you can also steer your traffic, which is what this slide illustrates. So for example, if you have a lot of UDP traffic, like Netflix, YouTube, and let's assume there's nothing bad in there, and you want to just bypass all your tools, you can do that. Or furthermore, if you don't think anybody should be looking at that in your organization during working hours, you can just drop that traffic. And when you, look in, when you log into your security tools, they won't even see the traffic because it's gonna be dropped before it even gets to them. So again, you maximize the efficiency of your tools by making sure they're looking at what really matters. All right, so hopefully all of you guys are um, familiar with the man in the middle attack. So this is the Gigamon in the middle. And this slide is all about SSL TLS decryption, which is one, along with metadata generation and deduplication, which will get its own, uh, we'll talk about it in, in upcoming episodes. Some of the most common use cases for uh, Gigamon. So, you know, the, the whole thing here, the whole message here is decrypt once and feed to a multitude of tools that need encrypted traffic. And I'm gonna ask another question. What happens to a FortiGate or any other firewall when you turn on deep packet SSL inspection? We'll get back to that. So this slide is kind of an overview of the Gigamon um, fabric. Down here you have all the nodes in physical or virtual form, followed by all the core intelligence features which are available in most of the components. And then up here you have the Giga Smart features. So those are the intelligent feature licensing that you can apply to the HC boxes. And they'll be discussed in more detail when we talk about the HC series and we'll have uh, some demos about all of that. And then on the sides here, you have Fabric Manager, which we'll talk about in the management and orchestration episode and Insight. This is a hierarchy, uh, hierarchical view of the fabric. You have your tabs, aggregation, your HC series, and your fabric manager. All of these are available in physical and virtual form factor. And then this is kind of like a little view of what the GUI looks like. All right, so let's get back to the whole question about SSL inspection and you know firewall throughput. This is a 40 gate 2500E and the firewall throughput for TCP traffic is 150 gigabits per second. Oops, go back. Sorry, I got clicked happy there. If you turn on SSL inspection, you're down to 9.4 gigabits per second. That's a big impact. So, I got a little homework for you guys. So after you know we're done with the episode or whenever you have time, go on the Fortinet website and look for a FortiGate that can do SSL inspection, not just certificate, but deep packet inspection at somewhere around 100 and something gigabits per second. I'm gonna give you a little hint on this first one. You're looking at probably the 6500F and then contact your distributor of choice, which hopefully that'll be us, and you know, get a quote on both models with similar licensing package and calculate the difference. And I'm willing to bet that it's gonna be a lot more than the cost of this guy here on the left. So just that alone will be cost for you to think about Gigamon, but also just remember all the other features that you can get and your ability to take your tools from being in line and give resiliency to your network. And um, you know, when, when you're having those conversations. So this is another example with the 1200D. From 72 gigabits per second, you're down to five. And with the 200D, from 20 gigabits per second, you're down to 820 megabits per second. And I wanna highlight the HC1 because I think this is gonna be a real hot seller for our partners once they become familiar with Fortinet. Because in addition to the features that it offers, 
by itself. This is going to be the sensor starting next year for Insight. So again, for all of you guys who are thinking about managed detection and response and you know, offering services, you will be able to do decryption, inline bypass, deduplication, a lot of those things. And in addition to that, send information to Insight to provide even more benefits for your customers. And these boxes, as you can see, they are modular and customizable to fit whatever use case you are trying to solve or whatever problems you're trying to solve. All right, so let's get to why we're really here today, which is uh, tab versus span. So, you know, very simple. Tabs are better, the end. You guys can all go. <laughs> all right, so um, if I could, I guess, synthesize this into a few words, I would say that tabs are better because you get the whole picture. So in the words of Gigamon, you know, tap when you can and span when you, when you can't. That's, that's the only reason. So let's look at this overly complicated mathematical equation here on the top. So one gigabit equals 1,000 megabit, and that's 60% of that is 600 megabit times two is 1.2. If you send that to a spam port, you're gonna have about 200 megabits of data that's dropped. So a single switch port running bi-directional traffic at 60%, that means you're gonna send 120% to a spam port. And that's not a good thing. And you will have at least 20% that is gonna be uh, of the data that's gonna be dropped immediately. So if a dozen or so similar ports are aggregated to a single spam port, only a fraction of that data is ever gonna get to the monitoring tools. So obviously, with passive tabs, which are on power, they run for years without failure and are the preferred kind. Uh, that hardware design eliminates oversubscription while capturing every packet in order. And of course, it should be noted that to insert a tab, you do need to bring the link down. So make sure you're doing so during a maintenance window. So here are the 10 commitments of tapping. I'm not gonna read all of them, uh, but I do wanna highlight some. Uh, number one, you are creating an exact copy of bi-directional network traffic at full line rate. So you get full fidelity. You have continuous access to traffic. And in the case of passive tabs, they require no user intervention or configuration. Span traffic has the lowest priority. So remember that because networking appliances at the end of the day, they're there to provide networking connectivity. Legal regulations or, co or corporate compliance sometimes mandates that all traffic for a particular segment be monitored. Can't do that with a spam port, okay? Uh, tabs do not care what protocol is carried in the traffic. All traffic is passed through passive tabs. Active ones do um, block errors, but they forward everything else. All right, so a few words of wisdom from Gigamon before installing uh, any tabs. Make sure again that you have a maintenance window because installing a tab requires bringing down a link. Verify that the links are working properly. Most importantly, and the whole reason for the slide, understand the expected results. So before you put the tab in, log into the network to see what the metrics are so that you know, when you put in the tab, you don't have the customer tell you, hey, you put this thing in and now this whole thing is slower. No, on the, you know, record those metrics before you install the tab. And then that way, you know what to expect after the fact. And of course, don't look at the lasers. All right, so passive tabs. They require no power of its own and does not actively interact with any components of the network. It uses an optical splitter to create a copy of the signal. Most passive tabs have no moving parts. They're highly reliable and require no config. A traditional method to split the light is to fuse or melt two cables together such that a portion of the light is funneled onto a secondary stream. 
and this technology is called uh, FBT. The concept is similar to when you have a river that hits a fork and a portion of the water continues in the original direction while the rest takes an alternate path. path. Both forks of the river continue to fall downstream and like water, light is also uh, directional. As a result, FBT tends to pass the traffic one way and it tends to be a low cost, works well for lower speed cable plants. A second splitter type uses thin film technology and the concept here is similar to shining um, a flashlight through a glass. Although the majority of the light goes through the window, there's a portion of the light that is reflected back as it hits the glass and if angled properly, uh, there's, there's a membrane that cuts across the fiber and will copy a portion of the optical signal, signal to the monitoring port. Thin films reflective technology tends to be, uh, tends to have a lower loss rate when working with high speed links, such as you know, 100 gigabits per second. Common split ratio for traditional one gigabit short range links is 70-30, where 70% of the light continues to network and 30% is allocated to monitoring ports. The concept is to allocate more light to the network to reduce the risk of, of you know, dropping network uh, traffic, because again, you know, the whole point of networking appliances is to route traffic primarily. Speeds such as 10 gigabit, 40, and 100 have different technical requirements, and they tend to be uh, more of an even split, so more like 60, 40, 50, 50. Uh, the most common split ratios deployed in networks today, because again, all networks are getting faster, are closer to 50, 50, uh, provided that you have you know, the, the proper levels of light available. And the instructions are very simple. You plug in the duplex cable from the first device to X-Link, plug in the second cable from device Y, and then attach the cables to the monitoring ports. There's no actual configuration of the tap. All right, active taps. Active taps require their own power source to regenerate the signals. There is no split ratio consideration because the tap receives the message and then it just retransmits it to both the network and the monitoring destinations. Important, this is very important. During a power outage, an active tag cannot regenerate the signal, so it becomes a point of failure. Hence, passive tabs that are not powered, obviously, they are preferred. Now, some active tabs uh, do incorporate bypass or failover technologies to mitigate this issue. Sophisticated models offer battery backup to extend usability during uh, power failures. When the battery begins to die, some of the tabs offer additional failover capabilities. For example, electromagnetic relays that fall into place to physically close the link to allow traffic to continue. Now you're not gonna have monitoring, but you're also not gonna have traffic disruption. Uh, I also wanna mention that when that happens, there is a renegotiation that takes place, so a few packets could be affected. Uh, TCP transmissions, you probably won't tell the difference. UDP, you might. So as long as the drawbacks of power failure are fully understood, uh, active tabs provide excellent value and extend visibility to sectors of the network that would otherwise go unmonitored. And these are the instructions to set up this particular model. There's some lights in the back that you wanna make sure they're on. You can also even configure um, management so you can access it remotely. And as you can see, it's, it's very simple. And this is a illustration of how the traffic uh, flows. All right, that's pretty simple, right? So what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> this is almost exactly like a picture that I have from my last job. And here we're talking about mixed connecting, mislabeled. Talk about no labels. Um, you know, I walked into a cabinet one time and it had a, uh, I think it was a Cisco 6500 chassis and no labels on, on, on the fiber. So, you know, one of the most common problems that you have is that you think you did everything right and then there's no data coming or, or wrong data coming to the monitoring port. Make sure that your connections are good to go. Also, going back, uh, 
something I forgot on the previous slides. For best results, make sure that the cable types should be consistent across the whole flow that you're trying to monitor. So match the cables. If you're doing multi-mode, multi-mode. If you're doing single mode, single mode. All right, so that's pretty much all I got. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of the uh, webinar. If you didn't, please let me know so I can do better. Uh, these are the sources, which obviously when we share the whole presentation, you guys will be able to uh, go in there. I kind of highlighted this one. This is, I believe, an eight or 10 page document on TAPS. I highly encourage everyone to give that a read because it's all meat and potatoes about why tap, how to tap, all that good stuff. A lot of what I covered today is from there. And then some of the other sources obviously um, are on the Gigamon and, and Fortinet websites. Again, remember there is in the training section of the Gigamon website um, videos specifically talking about not just the metadata use case for sims but also about eight or nine other use cases that solve common IT problems today so um, you know give those a try this is our contact info so I know that we are kind of at the end of our time for today uh, you know if you guys have questions uh, or if you have some questions and then you have later more questions, please, uh, you know, bring us your questions so, you know, we can go over them. And uh, that's, uh, that's all I got. David, Thank you, you want to add anything? Simon? You, Appreciate that. I hope uh, everyone get uh, what you need to say. Um, we also have- uh, Oh, wait, David, wait, yes. Go ahead. Brian, you bring a big magnet. That's, <laughs> uh, that's from Tony Stark. So I think that's in the Age of Ultron movie. So yes, thank you, Brian. Good job. Good job, Brian. Thank you, Juan, again. Um, and as everyone know, we have other uh, following session regarding the Gigamon and Fortinets. And hopefully you all get the uh, email from us and please go ahead and register. And if you feel any uh, interest in any other pro uh, topics, please feel free to contact us tell a at friend. any time. And yes, please uh, tell your friends, uh, your associates, your colleagues, and join us. Uh, we also have other webinar, um, Besides uh, Gigamon and Fortinet, we have other webinars. And so pay attention or uh, take a look at the email that you receive from us and go ahead and register. In the meantime, shall there be any questions, feel free, uh, reach out to us uh, or reach out to your uh, corresponding exclusive sales rep. Um, hope to hear from you soon.